talk about radicals and equations today, shall we? And let's look at an example. And here we have the cube root of x plus 1 is equal to a negative 2. Now notice for the first time we see the variable under the radical sign. And that's really the problem that we are now faced with. Now looking at a situation such as this, you say to yourself, well, in fact, if I were to cube this number on the left-hand side, and also cube this number on the right-hand side, we now have an equivalent equation to the first one. Would everyone agree with that? And now the cube root of x plus 1 cubed, of course, is, is x plus 1 is equal to a negative 2 cubed is negative 8, and therefore we have x then is equal to negative 9. Now, as we work through problems that involve a radical under uh, or a, a, a variable under the radical, what we had better do is to go back and check. We must always check our final result with respect to the original sentence, okay? So here we have the cube root of negative 9 plus 1, and the question is, is this equal to a negative 2? And on the left side, this then is what? The cube root of a negative 8, and in fact, we know that the cube root of negative 8 is what number is negative 2, indeed it checks, and so we may write our solution set as the element negative 9, okay? Well, let's look at a second example, and here we have the square root of x plus 1 is equal to a negative 2. So you follow through in exactly the same procedure, and you say to yourself, well, what would I like to do to both sides of this original statement? We would like to square. square. So, indeed, here we have this number squared, and on the right-hand side, negative 2 the quantity squared, and, of course, another name for this number on the left is x plus, one. x plus 1 is equal to, and here we have a negative 2 squared, which is 4, positive 4, therefore, x then is equal to 3. Well, this is a possible element in our solution set, but we had better check. Now, looking at the original statement, we have there what? The square root of... 3 plus 1 is equal to a question mark negative 2. And of course, 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is positive 2 is not equal to a negative 2. And indeed, this element, x equals 3, is not in the solution set. Since that's the only possible one that we have come up with, what then is the solution set for this original sentence? And Bill? The null set. It is the null set. Now, let's look at these two examples because I picked them purposely to illustrate a theorem which I think we can make. In the first case, we have here if A is equal to B, then A cubed is equal to B cubed. And I think you will agree that that's a true statement. In other words, the first sentence and the second sentence are equivalent. Now, similarly, in the second problem, here we have if A is equal to B, then A squared is equal to B squared. And I think you will agree that that's a true statement. Is that right? in which uh, we have these two are equivalent. So I think as part of a uh, theorem, let's write some of this down. For every A and B belonging to the set of real numbers, and for every N belonging to the set of natural numbers, uh, let's see what we may say. If A is equal to B, then what is uh, the conclusion that we can come to, Dick? A to the N equals B to the N. A to the N power then is equal to B to the N power, all right? Now, let's come back again to our first two examples. Now notice, if we were to take the converse of this statement that we have just made, if A cubed is equal to B cubed, the question is, is then A equal to B? In other words, if we have N to be an odd number, if A to the N is equal to B to the N, is A equal to B? And I think from this first example, I, I think everyone would agree that indeed this is the case. Whereas in the second example, if here we have if a squared is equal to b squared, then a is equal to b is not necessarily true. And in fact, it would be what? a is equal to b or a is equal to the opposite of b. Is that right? So in fact, I think there are two other parts that we may write to this theorem. If a to the n power is equal to b to the n power, and uh, uh, let's include that word uh, and put in that other statement then, n is odd. Let's say that, okay? Then, what is our conclusion but that, uh, Bill? A equals B. In that case, A indeed is equal to B. And, of course, the third part of the theorem then would say what? If A to the N power is equal to B to the N, and N is even, an even positive integer, then our conclusion is what? And what may we say there? Uh, Brenda? A is equal to B. A is equal to B. Or A is equal to B. 
or A is equal to the opposite of B, all right? And if we keep this in mind, every time we're dealing with an even power here, and we want to sort of uh, reverse the process, if A to the N is equal to B to the N, and N is an even number, then our conclusion is that it can be either A, a equals B, or A is equal to the opposite of that number. Well, let's keep that in mind as we go through these problems. Let's look at a fourth example. Here we have one minus x plus the square root of x plus one is equal to zero. Now notice the way in which it's set up, we have to do something before we actually square both sides. Is that right? You say to yourself, well, if I were to square everything here, uh, in the process of squaring, I'm going to end up with another radical. So it really doesn't simplify the matter very much. And you look at this and you say to yourself, well, let's, uh, let's subtract this number from both sides of the equation. In other words, the square root of x plus 1 then is going to be equal to, and what, what do we have there, Doug? X minus 1. There we have x minus 1. And notice in this case we have uh, isolated the radical, so to speak, so that now we have it set up so that when we square, what do we have on the left-hand side here, Malcolm? X plus 1. We have x plus 1. Let's leave out the actual step of putting in the, this number squared. x plus 1 then is equal to, and on the right-hand side, we want to square that, Peter? x squared x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 1 plus 1. Now let's clean this up and see what happens. If we were to subtract x from both sides and then turn the whole thing around, we have here an x squared, is that right? Minus 3x. And if we were to subtract 1 from 1, we have 0. And therefore, x squared minus 3x is <coughs> equal to what? Zero. It's equal to 0. And looking at that, you say, well, if I were to factor out the number x, we have x times an x minus 3 is 0, and using one of our other theorems, therefore x is 0, or x is equal to 3. Is that right? Now what must we do? Let's check. check. Because we are dealing here with an even root in which we then squared it, this statement, this uh, sentence right here, and this sentence are not equivalent from the theorem which we have just developed. So let's then check. In the original, let me just write down the original sentence. 1 minus x plus the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's substitute x as 0. We have 1 minus 0 plus the square root of 0 plus 1. The question is, is this equal to 0? Well, 1 minus 0, this is 1 plus 1. It's certainly not 0. So the element x is equal to 0, this sentence, the solution set, then is not uh, true. Is that right? Well, let's then check the other number. x is equal to 3. We have 1 minus 3 plus the square root of 3 plus 1. The question is, is that equal to 0? And we have 1 minus 3 plus 2. And sure enough, I think we will agree that this one is equal to 0. It checks. Therefore, our solution set is the one number, which is what? 3. OK. Let's look at a uh, fifth example. Here we have a sentence in which we have the square root of x plus 1 minus 2 times the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, in this case, uh, if you were to isolate a radical, I think perhaps you have some choice in that we may have, say, the square root of x plus 1 on the left-hand side of the sentence and everything else on the right. And in fact, let's try that and see what happens, okay? We have there then the square root of x plus 1 is equal to, and now let's subtract this name from both sides, and then we have, what, 2 to the square root of x minus one. Now, notice when we square this, both sides of this sentence and this equation, we're still going to end up with a radical on the right-hand side. And you say to yourself, well, I really haven't advanced much from what I started with. In fact, I think you have because at least uh, in the beginning here, we have two radicals, that is two variables under two radicals. And in the next line here, I think we're going to have only one. So let's see what happens. Well, if you square the left-hand side, what do we have there? Glenn. X plus one. There we have an x plus one. Now on the right-hand side, when you square this number, or this expression, what then do you have? Uh, Steve. You have a four x. Four x plus one. Oh. Uh, careful now, this is a minus b, the quantity squared is what we're dealing with. So it's a four squared x minus two ab. Minus two minus twice four two minus root x. Four root x. Minus a four, the square root of x. Does everyone agree with that? Okay. And then we still have what? One. Plus one. Does everyone agree that two root x minus one all squared then is equal to this? Okay. Now, 
let's uh, see what we can do with this. If we were to subtract 1 from both sides, all right, and also let's subtract 4x from both sides, so x minus 4x is what? A uh, negative 3x is equal to a negative 4, the square root of x. All right, now here we have another radical, but what do you think you can do uh, in order to get rid of this radical? And uh, what's the obvious thing to do, John? Square it. Square it again. All right, now negative 3x, the quantity squared is, nine Kirby, nine. we have 9x squared is equal to, and here we have a negative 4, the square root of x, all squared is 16x. 16x. Does everyone agree with that? All right, let's then subtract 16x from both sides. 9x squared minus 16x equals 0. Let's use our theorem in which we'll have x times 9x minus 16 is 0. Therefore, x is 0, or x is equal to what number? Brenda, 16 9. Does everyone agree with that number? Okay. Again, notice now we have done this process twice in that from this sentence to this sentence, these two sentences are not equivalent. And then also from this sentence to this sentence, these two sentences are not equivalent. Therefore, certainly our final result, that is this uh, compound sentence and the original sentence are not equivalent. And in fact, let's check to see. By the way, when are two sentences equivalent? When are they equivalent? When, Bill? When they have the same solution set. When they have the same solution set. So indeed, our, what we're saying is that this sentence and the original sentence will not have the same solution set. Let's check in, in order to make sure. There we have, let me just repeat the original, minus 2 to the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's substitute the number 0. We have the square root of 0 plus 1 minus 2 to the square root of 0 plus 1. The question is this equal to 0. Well, this is the square root of 1, which is 1. This is minus 0 plus 1. Again, this is not equal to 0. Therefore, we will exclude this number. Let's then substitute x as 16 ninths. There we have the square root of 16 ninths plus 1 minus twice the square root of 16 ninths plus 1. The question is, is this equal to 0? Now, 16 ninths plus 1 is what? 16 ninths plus 9 ninths is 25 ninths, and the square root of 25 ninths is 5 thirds. Okay, that's 5 thirds minus. Now, the square root of 16 ninths is 4 thirds times 2 is 8 thirds, so it's 5 thirds minus 8 thirds, and another name for 1 is 3 thirds, and lo and behold, this certainly is equal to 0. It checks. So our solution set is the one element of 16 9. Let me give you your homework assignment and you can practice on some of these problems.